and what is the difference between string buffer and string builder string buffer uh, we can use in uh, collections actually uh, in terms of synchronization any difference is there okay so string buffer mm. and string builder both can store uh, the mutable kind of sequence string. of character which is string both can store mutable string objects the main okay. is, difference is string buffer is thread safe uh, that okay. string means, builder uh, is not buffer. thread safe thread safe means multiple thread can uh, hold the object uh, at the same time can you tell me why ci cd is important do you know what is ci cd ci cd is like an automation tool for the building and deployment so uh, in our application what we are doing whenever any code is merged to master it is automatically built and deployed to the environment for other environments where we have to manually deploy the build to be uh, select the version of jar for, of different application in case of microservices there are different services and a different version of each service so we select the required version and build an image and deploy it to environment so this is all automated process so that's why the ci cd is important you mentioned that trying for object method what type of object this method will return yes uh, it will be written a uh, mapper row mapper okay so and how you can use uh, the row mapper to fetch the data uh, actual data so we uh, we write our query wait uh, there is a query as uh, as we write in our uh, db mm -hmm. like that but instead instead of uh, our uh, whatever value we provide in our real uh, in a db query that will be some suppose we uh, i have to fetch a employee record uh, which id is one select star from employee where id equals to we give a question mark mm -hmm. uh, in our query and uh, and on the basis of that query there is in query that we have to provide our query for object in that we have to give our that uh, instance uh, that query sql query and uh, whatever parameters is required mm -hmm. and we use that whatever parameter we require so that will be mapped in that query and uh, we use uh, that one is for mapping there is a one uh, class that uh, i am not uh, remembering now that will automatically automatically map the report which will be uh, getting from our, our db okay i'm not remembering that uh, okay, class no uh, there is yes, no default that by default they are providing their own class for mapping that i'm not uh, recollecting that now okay no problem with that so how can we create an object dynamically at runtime in java one of the way is the serialization or deserialization we can say and uh, there are the number of ways we can create the the object by using the we know that the new keyword and uh, clone and uh, the for class name but uh, if the runtime we if we can say serialization deserialization we can say that uh, yeah and one more way is to use reflection so in reflection you have okay. class dot new instance and uh, you can create a new uh, object so what are the managed beans uh, managed beans uh, it will be uh, the container managed beans that we can uh, have the set of uh, home and remote classes uh, remote interfaces in that it, it is having uh, three uh, files in that uh, which is which are home bean remote interface and the class uh, bean we are accessing it all the beans are actually extendable from bean adapter class of okay. java and uh, in your application if you go to application and download this file are you using application property or not uh, application dot property okay so if you go to application property and if you check the version of in your application uh, suppose in any given scenario you find that version is something like this version is 2.0.2.0.1 snapshot so what do you understand by that what is the what is snapshot doing here are, are you talking about the spring boot version we are using yeah yeah why the uh, word snapshot there in the version because you will see if you check your application but tomorrow morning you will see that in many of the cases many places uh, so regarding i don't have idea regarding that okay so generally what happens when you when you are Get a version of that application. So suppose I have version 2.0.0, okay, and mm -hmm. uh, now the stable version is 2.0.0, and now you are started working on uh, on some new feature. So for that new feature, it will create a version uh, 2.0.1 snapshot. So snapshot is something like the upcoming version. The upcoming version will be 2.0.1, and snapshot is just indicating that it is a future version of that application so what type of design patterns you have used design patterns like a creational behavior a structural design pattern we are going to use 
Krishna is like some uh, creating the object. Singleton is there, or season factory is there, or like you are going to factory, you are going to define on that. And the structural, some like a chain responsibility or uh, proxy related. So that things we are going to use on that. So have you used uh, directly used proxy design pattern or uh, have you created itself in your project anywhere? Yeah, we are created the proxy design pattern. We are going to create it on that somewhere. Like uh our some like a url like if we are going to flip flop concept we are going to use at that time like a multiple url we need to provide for the host so there is a, like we are going to use uh proxy means what like proxy means like we are going to provide you some replica of that the original application to use that things it's like a, some access related things we are going to provide what is the practical use of default method in java Default methods uh, are mainly came into picture for solving the limitation of interfaces and also for adding more functionality methods in interface without breaking the implementation classes functionality. So suppose uh, there is one interface. Uh, in that interface, um, you have implemented one method, and that interface is implemented by two other classes. You have also declared one uh, method in that interface, but there is no implementation. In both other classes, which is uh, using Im implementing the interface, then we will get uh, an error, right? A compiled an error. But instead of using default uh, method in that interface, we will not be able to get the class which is, which is requiring this method. The default method can can be overridden. And uh, in terms of like uh, you have already written a code, and then you need to add some methods in some interfaces. There you can mm -hmm. add default methods. Yeah, without uh, breaking the fun existing functionality, so you don't. Yeah, without breaking the existing functionality. Yeah, so your already written methods does not need to require override th those default methods which you added recently. So, what is application context? What is what is the use oh. of application context? Okay, so this is really IUC container, so that is. You can say that is core of our application. Okay, so that uh, what it does basically it manage all the you can say the beans in our application. So it basically creates the beans, manage the whole life cycle, and use the dependency injection so for managing the component. So we can say that it is a core of it is the core of our application. What are these one to one, one to many, many to many relationship mapping in database design? Basically, like you have a field exactly where you are like kind of mapping. So in a table, multiple rows in some another table. So that is something called one to many mapping. So uh, like you have like that those relationships being intent throughout your uh, tables, like how you are storing your primary key and foreign keys. So you have employee here, and then probably in another table you will be having like multiple addresses, like temporary address and a communication address and some other office address. So for the same row, probability will records coming up in the other table. So like that again, like map uh, to one also like you like multiple records here, and then you have like single record uh, representation uh, so like that those things are mapped and we used to this is the data as well in from the data how we are testing your restful restful applications uh, we are doing tests manually or uh, apart from that there are different unit test cases and right of application that helps we also have we are writing bdds uh, so what do what do we do when bdds is actually use gherkins uh, to create a, a file so we obtain that from the bees and uh, we use this gherkin file to actually create uh, test cases so where we um, usually write all the uh, scenarios like because the book scenarios like given when and then so these are the three major keywords happens in the file so uh, given is like where we construct all the data and then you know uh, then we perform the action and then we compare it uh, do an assertion after that so that helps us for a complete one service one single service to actually perform the unit testing for that service. We are trying to also put in an integration level so when uh, we have an integration environment up and running. Uh, in this case, we will use a Karate DSL to simulate a few scenarios. So uh, that will be like end to end. Uh, that won't be on I mean, through UI. So it will be through the web services uh, that we'll be using to, to recreate some scenarios. And uh, yeah, it will be quicker because uh, as of today, we have uh, end to end test cases that are like, based on Angular and Protractor. So, which runs through the UI, and uh, it takes time to execute the uh, test cases because there are a lot of test scenarios. And uh, with the help of the Karate DSL test cases, it's a lot faster. So, have you used Executor framework? I mean, do you have experience yes, in that? I have. Yes, I have used the full set executor. New full set executor for there. Means earlier project I have used that and use that to execute certain tasks. Uh, you know, there was a scenario where we needed to 
call uh, uh, there was some records and for that record we needed to call an uh, external api uh, there was a url so after that receiving the response we were uh, needed to update the database so fetch the record created the task object for that and submitted to executor oh. and uh, return the future object when it is uh, or in the future object we just check that whether what was the value is that completed or not or is completed we mark that batch of particular batch of task as completed. 